Bruce, how did you get in there? You can't come on this one. Come on, how'd you come? Come here. Sorry. You can't come in. I'm sorry. You can't come with me. Go on, off you go. Go home. No, 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 Bruce. Go home. See what it's like over here, find the flattest bit, and uh, set up camp. Got my spot. Nicely concealed from the wind. It's a little bit of a breeze, but further around it was absolutely howling. So I'm right at the very end of the lake. Um, got this little patch down here, it's not completely flat. I'll try and make it as flat as possible. It's all shingle and stuff. Um, so I probably won't even be able to peg, peg the tent down. I've got my, I've got my Hilberg Steiker with me. Uh, so I can use some rocks, uh, some big rocks around here to just tie it down with. Uh, the weather looks like it's, it's changing a bit. Could rain soon. Uh, so I need to get on with camp. And yeah, let me show you what the boat, uh, where I've put the boat and where I am in the lake. So boat's tied off. I'm at the head of the lake. It's all pretty cool. This is my view. So I can see right down, almost to the very end of the lake. I'm under cover from these beech trees. The boat is just off to the right well concealed in here plenty of safe spots for me to have a fire yeah good spot there's nothing hanging overhead all good 
Master said, got the Hilleberg Steiker with me. All set up. Got my tarp and the tent. Got a couple of poles sticking out the front. I'm gonna unpack my gear. Get a fire going, smoky fire, to get rid of some of these sand flies. Got a nice smoky well, what I hope is going to be a smoky fire going. Sand flies are pretty strong. I don't want to keep putting DEET on. So if I can get smoke in my clothes, smoke on the tent, stuff like that, that should put the sand flies off quite a bit. I think it's beer time. Hazed and confused. Emerson's Cloudy IPA. I need this. I haven't had to walk in or anything, but chopping up the wood and getting this tent set up, and it's been a long day. Cheers, everybody, cheers. That is really good. Emerson's Hazed and Confused, Cloudy IPA, the New Zealand beer. Oh, it's not cold, not cold at all, I'm quite warm, it's just the blooming sand flies. Just need to make some smoke, get it over everything. Hopefully this is doing the trick. The light is attracting the sand flies. So my beautiful spot here, by the lake. Come out here in my jeans, just to prove that you can. You can find decent spots and just wear pretty normal clothes. As long as you've got good gear, to go on top of that in case there's a problem then fine but otherwise you can feel pretty normal in your jeans and your normal shoes oh man you can see i've got the tarp the aquaquest tarp this is a uh this is just a three by two meter nothing special i've set it up just high enough so i can stand up under it um you know me, I like tarps. Uh, I've got my Hilleberg Steiker tent. It's not for the tent. It's not because I don't trust the tent or anything like that. It's so I can sit out like this and just chill. And if it does rain, um, then I'm undercover. 
and once it stops raining, obviously you get drips from the trees, I'm still under cover to sit outside. I've got it angled to drain off at the front down there. Um, it's covering just enough of the top of the tent so that I'll be able to leave the front door open. Water won't come down into the tent. Um, that's why I put it back so far. People ask me, why do you cover half the tent? Well, that's why, so I can keep the front door open and look out. Um, yeah, I don't want to have to keep closing it. Oh, actually, <laughs> I've just realized it's a lot colder than I thought it was. I can see the steam off my breath. I just feel hot in this little pocket here and also I've just been working hard. So this trip is my first trip since making 10,000 subscribers. 10,000 subscribers, six weeks ago, I think it was six weeks, seven weeks, I gave a thank you video for 1,000 subscribers. Where I said, next up, 10,000. Ah, I don't really think so. Seems like a long shot. And already we're at 10,000. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. A lot of that is due to um, one particular video I did. Um, again, in the Steiker, uh, the one that I talked about my dad, that I dedicated to my dad. Um, again, if you're new to the channel, my father passed away um, in March. I had been there, it was a long thing, and it was horrible. Sorry, I'm quite emotional about it now, still. Anyway, I talked about him there, uh, how we got COVID and came back from there. Uh, and then he passed. And I told dad that I would be doing these camping videos. He did get to see one. Oh, sorry. <sighs> Still raw. So we got to see one. He didn't get to see that one, obviously. But he got to see the first one I did when I got back. I hope he enjoyed it. But a big inspiration for me to come out and do this was I always loved camping. I liked hunting. I liked camping more. My dad encouraged me a lot. I never managed to get to go with him, unfortunately. But I thought when I get back here, I'm gonna do more of these. And I had videoed some before and put them up and not much had really happened on YouTube. But I, you know, bought some proper equipment had a plan and here we go 10,000 subscribers just like that amazing sorry about the smoke but I need I need the smoke on me to keep these sand flies away oh anyway yes thank you to all of you brilliant subscribers Where's next? A hundred thousand? A hundred thousand. Wow. Well, hopefully people just keep enjoying these and we will get there together. Right. I'm gonna <laughs> clean myself up a bit and uh, tend to this fire and come back to you. Um, 
when I thought more about getting dinner ready. Thanks. So tonight I am cooking steak and roast potato. I had a look for the stag. It was definitely there. Okay, I've got my tomahawk steak. Bit of Texas rub. Ah, so the um, the astute of you will notice that Brucey is not with me. Unfortunately. He's not allowed in the national parks. No dogs allowed. So I'm gonna put that near the fire until I've got a bit of coals that I can put it over the fire. I guess I could have made a tripod. Okay, steak on the fire. Time to put my uh, jacket potato on. Got it ready to go. Just gonna put it on the edge of the coals here. Not in the fire. So I've got a different headlight this time. This Phoenix headlamp. I'll put a link to it. It's the HR18. And they said, would I like to try it out? I said, sure. It's flipping powerful, I have to say. I just tested it. <laughs> you can see a long way. Yeah. It's got a couple of uh, different lights on it. And it's got a, uh, a spotlight as well that is just insanely powerful and from what I can gather the battery lasts about 54 hours um, this thing is so bright but it's so light it's much lighter than my other night core lamp um, and I like this this clicky adjustment at the back Turn this down. So you you turn you turn this lever at the back to make it tighter. I like it. It's really good. It reminds me of um, one of my original LED lenser headlamps, but I think this is actually better. It's pretty good quality. Um, waterproof. Yeah, I like it a lot. I might be using this a lot more. So thank you, Phoenix. It's a good headlamp. Headlamp. The other thing they sent me was a mini light. Now, I didn't think I'd actually need it, but it is tiny, yet it is so powerful. <laughs> I can see a long way with this as well. Now, I don't know how long the battery lasts. Uh, I'm assuming maybe an hour or so. I'd have to uh, put that in the description, but it is really strong. And it is absolutely tiny, really tiny. So you just keep it in your pocket. So I've got this attached to my um, my Gerber dime, which is my set of, it's like my multi-tool, but it just fits in your pocket. It's got my knife. I use this all the time. Bottle opener, scissors, tweezers, pliers. So yeah, I've attached this Phoenix mini EDC everyday carry light to that and I've got to say pretty handy I like that as well so Phoenix thank you very much FENIX I'll put a link to them um, I wouldn't if I didn't think it was any good they didn't pay me 
Oh, this is rechargeable. They're both rechargeable as well. Um, they didn't pay me. They just asked me would I like to try them out. Maybe if I could mention them, do a review. Uh, so yeah, good stuff. That stag is still there. I haven't scared it away. I can hear it hitting the trees. It can only be 40, 30 meters away. I don't know why I'm not scaring it. If he comes barreling through here, this will be quite a video. I have to run into the water. Stags are big. When they get angry, if it's their plot. Mm. Yeah, you don't want to be around one. Okay, let's see how the steak is now. Pretty good, I'd say. See, that's pretty good. Hmm. Hmm. That is really good. Okay, steak's ready. I've actually just done some onions as well. Just quickly fried them. I don't want them overdone. Just something to have with the steak. My potato is going to be a while, so I thought I'd leave that. Oh, it looks good. Oh, it looks really good. Mmm. That is good. English mustard. This is Coleman's. Is it the original? I don't know. It's very hot. Not for the faint of heart. I think it goes well with the um, Texas rub. <laughs> oh, that's much better. That is good steak. There's one thing missing. A brew. Number two. This is Emerson's again. Bird Dog India Pale Ale. Very nice, very refreshing. It's Moorish. Goes well with the steak. I wonder if there's anything that wouldn't go well with the steak right now. I mean, the steak is absolutely perfect for me. Just a bit less than medium rare. Oh man, what a combination. That is superb. Everything tastes better out here. Right. Foot's getting hot there. I'm gonna sort the fire out. Um, it's giving off a lot of heat, which is good because the temperature's really dropped. It's cold now. Move my potato a bit, which is still cooking. Oh, okay. Potatoes done. A little bit of salted butter. Ram it right in there. We're good to go with the potato. The steak has been demolished. I am stuffed. But it's cold. And when it's cold, 
it's good to eat food. Huh. Oh. Right, I'm going to finish this potato. Have some more beer. Come back to you then. I'm stuffed. Absolutely stuffed. And that was a great meal. It's giving off some great heat. That was beer number two. Gone. I'm really missing Bruce. I really wish he was here with me. And I know he wants to be here as well. But it is what it is. He's not allowed in the National Park. Because <laughs> I'm going to be in that tent alone tonight. No Bruce. It's not the same. And it's not the same having the wake up, you know, not having the wake up in the morning from Bruce as well. He's so loving. And he's just so happy to see you. Hopefully uh, I'll take him on the next one. I know he wants to. This fire is kicking off serious heat. I've already had to move back a couple of times. My legs are absolutely toasty, which is great because I'm wearing jeans. <laughs> and with this breeze that's been coming through and how cold it is, and it is cold, everything behind me and out of sight here is, is really cold. I would be pretty chilled. I've got other trousers as well, not just jeans. I'm prepared. I just got a message on my... So there's no mobile phone signal here. But I just got a message on my Garmin in reach. Um, always carry my Garmin in reach with me. I've got the Garmin in reach mini. And it's a satellite communicator. And it's an SOS beacon as well. It's like a PLB. But uh, PLB and EPIRB is, uh, I think, more reliable because that uses radio frequency but can only be used for an emergency. Uh, whereas this uses satellite uh, iridium, I think, and uh, you can use it for messaging as well. It's cigar time. forget rum today Jamaican rum cheers mm. and shout out to my neighbor Noel who let me uh, use his boat Brilliant little boat. Might not look like much. <coughs> but, well. But the beauty of these little aluminium pontoon boats is that you can just drive them straight up onto shore, bang them into docks, whatever. They, they're so rugged. They'll put up with so much abuse. Whereas fiberglass, modern fiberglass boats with a gel coat, you can't do that stuff. So if you're looking for ideas for a boat rough and ready that you can drive straight up onto shore and not care about sand, gravel, stones, that sort of stuff, um, aluminium, pontoon boat, really great. They don't handle the best. But they are rugged and dependable.
It's so quiet here by the lake. It's beautiful. Just the crackling of the fire. Um, when I get to, when I went to get some firewood earlier, well, just a few minutes ago. God, my jeans are so hot. Um, a possum darted up the tree right next to me. So, and it's been cackling. So Bruce, anyone who saw my last video knows that Bruce is afraid of possums. He's very scared of possums. So he would he would have gone straight in the tent anyway. He wouldn't have hung out. In fact, last night I went to put him in his kennel and a possum darted past, made the sound. Bruce turned around, went straight back in the house, into onto his bed in the house. I'm like, oh God, okay. All right, I thought, it's cold outside, okay. You know what, it's getting older, he's afraid. I'll let him sleep on his bed in the house. I closed the bedroom door, because his bed is just outside our bedroom door. One minute later, he opens the bedroom door just so he can see us, and puts his nose on the floor just inside the bedroom. Oh yeah, he, just in case you don't know, Bruce knows how to open doors, um, which has become a bit of a nightmare because you've got to lock them to stop him from opening them. But he'll just jump up, put one paw on, open the door and walk in. He's very clever. And I know you're all missing him, but you did get to see him a little bit at the beginning of the video. Maybe I'll uh, put him on the end of the video as well when I get home. You see the greeting that he gives me. I'm going to finish the cigar in front of the fire and just chill. Listen to the sounds on the lake. I'll come back to you when I'm ready for bed. Bedtime. All tucked in. I'm on my Neoware Extherm Max extra wide, huge sleeping pad. Oh, and it is nice to have all this extra room to sleep on. I'm on an angle, like <laughs> so. I've shoved all of my clothes along one side of the sleeping pad. It seems to do the trick. We'll see how it goes in the middle of the night. I've got my enlightened equipment conundrum. Uh, it's a sort of half, it has the option of quilt or sleeping bag. Uh, this is good down to 20 Fahrenheit, which is, I don't know. Don't know what that is, minus six, something like that. Overkill for what I've got tonight. I've got the vents here. The door is completely open, just as mesh, both sides. Uh, to let the air flow through. I've got the actual front door, uh, the outer door open completely. And it's just, I don't want any condensation. I want fresh air coming through. I know it's not gonna be cold enough to justify the sleeping bag. So I'd rather have that air come through. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. So I'm all settled in. There's no Bruce, missing Bruce. Fire is out. I made sure it was out. I think all the chores are done. So, hasn't rained. It was meant to, but it didn't. Lucky me, I guess. Um, first time ever on one of these things. When I thought it might rain. Okay, so, catch you in the morning for breakfast, coffee, Unless something amazing happens in the middle of the night, which I doubt anything will. There are possums everywhere, so. I'm not getting up for that though. All right, see you in the morning. Morning. I had a pretty good sleep. This, um, I'm on the big thermo rest. Wide extra max 
whatever it's called. I don't know. It's huge. Anyway, it's so much nicer than the other ones. Oh, it's so big. Oh, what time is it? It's about eight o'clock. Yep, eight o'clock. Yeah, I slept pretty well. Quite hot in this. But this tent is so amazing because you just adjust all the vents. So most of the night I had both door vents fully open. Got the mesh. But um, I did pull them up a little bit later in the night just so I could lie half out the sleeping bag and be okay. Still a bit chilly. Feet were a little bit cold, but that's because I've been in here a long time. So, I need to get up, put a brew on. Definitely need coffee. I can see through the mesh here, there are loads of sandflies. What a pain that's gonna be dealing with them today. I'm gonna have to have DEET on all day. Don't want to light a fire. Uh, sandflies, right, gotta get up. Got my little table with me again. And I've got the different Trangia set with me. This one is the 25, which is bigger than my other one, the 27. I don't know how that works, the numbering system. My other one is hard anodized. This is just aluminium. I got this one because I'm coming out with my gorgeous wife, Anne. I need to be able to cook a bit more. And also, as I said, she likes her tea. So I'll be forever boiling water for her, which means I needed a bigger kettle. And that comes with this one. Happy wife, happy life. If you've never seen the Tranja cook sets before, they're alcohol burners. All I've got in here is, and this is the burner, all I've got in here is methylated spirits. That's the simmer ring, which opens and closes. It's all brand new though, so never done it. It's a bit tight at the beginning. Um, it's also how you put it out, as I was correctly informed. You put this on top to put the flame out. So you got your spirit burner there. Now different people have different techniques for lighting this so that they don't get burnt. Some people prefer long matches, whatever. Now the reason I've got the got this on the table is in case you didn't see my hammock camp I almost set light to the camp that didn't that wouldn't have gone down well at all um, the tranger fell off the grill that I was having it on whereas this table is more stable stable table I'm gonna need a lot of drinks today. I'm gonna to crank it. Tranges are not the quickest thing. They really aren't. Um, but saying that, in the kettle, it's probably half or a third of the time as it would to boil that in one of their just pans. So if you're gonna get the system and you like hot drinks, get it with the kettle. It will honestly save you tons on fuel and hassle. It's just so much easier cooking it in the kettle. It's a lovely morning, but there is a lot of cloud coming in. I was kind of hoping not to have rain on this one. <laughs> you know my luck. Ah. <sighs> Maybe I'll show you uh, just quickly what I'm looking at, where I am. Put it all into a bit of perspective for you.
Still got loads of fuel left in that. Any of you who's got a camp chair like this, there's a that the, the bag that it comes in has loops on the top, webbing loops. You probably wondered what they were for. You thread the whole bag onto the the rung, the uh, struts of the chair, and then you've got a pocket at the back to store everything in. Huge pocket. Mm. Right, I'm going to enjoy this on the lakefront. swans with a cygnet and a baby in between them and white thing and just make them out feeding on the bottom of the shallow lake right in front of me the little baby is so cute I've walked around to the Mount Misery jetty. It's about 40 minute walk from where I am. I'm over there in the background. Lots of fish jumping here. More swans. Just beautiful. Still raining at the end of the lake there, as you can see. But not here. Perfect spot. And I'm just round the corner. Sort of round that corner there. Amazing that no rain. Walking back from that jetty, Misery Jetty. This is the path. Goes all the way along the lake edge, the top end of the lake. We have these markers that show us the way.
and it is beautiful to walk through here. The sun reflecting off the water. You get these occasional gaps in the trees. The most spectacular view. This is a beech forest, ancient. This is what I was talking about. With these gaps in the trees. Check that out. Still raining at the other end of the lake. <laughs> Shame Bruce can't be here with me. This water is so crystal clear. Stunning. Right. Walk back to the uh, campsite. I'm going to chop some firewood for tonight uh, just because it's nice to have a fire. The temperature is pretty cold once the sun goes in. So I'm going to have another fire here. Got lots of dry stuff around, so I'm going to chop that up. And then I'm going to prepare my late breakfast lunch. I'm going to go for some sausage, bacon and egg. But I'm going to do that on the trangia, not on the fire. I'm going to save the fire till later. Uh, when I need some smoke, get rid of the flies, and just to heat things up. Whew. Is there a better sound than bacon and eggs and sausages and eggs and basically eggs cooking? I don't think there is. Bacon, sausage and egg. It was never going to be the prettiest meal, but this is going to be delicious. Mmm. Very good. Oh, that's so good. It's very windy. Orange Ruffy. Emerson's. Hazy pale ale. Tropical. Don't know what that means. It is lunchtime. It's very good. It is tropical. I don't know why. Oh, I'm so hungry. still windy and there are storm clouds but 
they're moving off into the distance. So I'm just chilling. Oh, these bumblebees are so funny. So yeah, cleaned up the pans. Oh, it was a great meal. You can hear the bumblebee. Look at that. They're so funny. It's because there's a blue cloth there. So I'm gonna have my coffee. And just chill. Chill until dinner time. Unless something amazing happens. I might just show you these storm clouds as they're moving along. Maybe get the storm clouds in a time lapse. Other than that, I'll come back at dinner. The wind's died down a fair bit. It's just gone 4 p.m. It'll be dark in about just over two hours. Um, the sand flies, this is when they're uh, at their worst. So what I want to do is light the fire now. I've got some big chunky stuff here that's very dense and it will burn for ages all through till this evening and should give off a lot of smoke as well. And that's what I want. I want it nice and smoky around here um, and something to sit by. At the moment, the wind's blowing this way. I've got sand flies in the tent because obviously I've been going in and out of the tent. So there's loads of sand flies in the tent. The smoke will blow there and they should leave. So I'm gonna get this all lit up. Got my fatwood, little fatwood pile here. Of course, I should do this away from the wind. So I'm just going to let this fat wood get, get settled, get hot. You can probably hear the waves have died down, the wind has died down, and it's drifting back and forth, back and forth. So I've got my pile. So as you can see, I've moved the fire away just a bit further forward from the spot it was before, because I was getting some ashes on the tent. And so I was trying to move it, move it away from the tent a bit more. Some nice smoky driftwood here. It's a little bit damp, but it will give off a really good smoke. At the moment, the smoke's blowing straight towards the camera. At some point, it will change and come back again. The last of the sunshine's just there.
It should be doing the trick, getting rid of the sand flies. In fact, a lot of them are gone already. But I just need the smoke to come this way. And it will, eventually. I thought we were going to get a storm and rain, but it just never happened. As you saw on the time lapse, for some reason, it, it, all the clouds just kept stopping right over the lake. I've got no idea, and then disappearing. But it is still raining at the end of the lake. It hasn't stopped at all since I've been here. So, no idea. Just lucky or unlucky for you. You don't get a rainy video. That's nice. The temperature drops so quickly when the sun goes in. It gets down to single digits centigrade really quickly. It might look warm, but I, as you can see, I've had to put the jumper on. So I've got the fire going in long format now. So I've got some really long logs on top. That'll just keep giving off smoke. And a good base underneath. It's still giving off lots of heat, but giving off a good amount of smoke. And once in a while I douse my clothes in the smoke and it stops all the sand flies. There are just sand flies everywhere. Um, I've got DEET on, but the smoke seems to do the trick as well. It gets rid of the smell. Uh, sort of, you know, being an animal and drawing the sand flies in. The heat from this thing is incredible. I saw this long fire set up on uh, Survival Russia channel on YouTube. Um, a Danish guy. And he managed to have one of these going all night with really huge logs lengthways. I don't need that much. <laughs> but this is so hot that I'm back down into my t-shirt now even though it's single digits just away from the fire in front of the fire it's beautiful really hot so it's coming up to about half five now i think i'll start dinner at about six o'clock so I'll come back to you then Okay, lamb curry. What are you gonna need? You're gonna need lamb, curry powder, coconut cream, small tin of, tin tomatoes, chopped, small beef stock, like a cup, onion, garlic, ginger, fresh coriander, rice, in this case I'm using palau rice, a bit of cooking oil, a bit of salt, and to go with it, naan bread. Okay, first things first. We sweat the onion just a bit, so we're going to get our flame going. So I need that to bloom. So we start chopping up the onion and the garlic. This is all going to go on the fire.
Okay, so the onion goes in by itself first into the pan. Nice amount of oil in there. You don't need to wait for it to get hot. So again, you just want to soften the onions. So while the onion is uh, cooking there, I've got my garlic ready. Now I'm just slicing a little bit of ginger. So I've got my ginger ready, sorry ginger and my garlic. I like big chunky stuff, but you might want to do it a bit smaller. Oh, I forgot an important ingredient whilst you're cooking. Beer. Emerson's Pale Ale in this case. Cheers. Oh, that is actually very good. These are starting to soften now. Starting to separate by themselves. So I'm going to put my ginger and garlic in. Okay. That's softened nicely. Now the lamb goes in. You need this pretty high heat to brown the lamb. The higher the heat, the better. Obviously I'm limited on the Trangia, but at home you can crank this if necessary. Or if you go in your back garden and you've got a gas cooker, crank it on that. Or go and buy a Trangia and do this in the garden in lockdown. Get all the onion, garlic and ginger flavour into the meat as it browns. Now whatever you do, don't overdo it. Don't burn the onions. You don't want to caramelize them. You just want to keep them soft. But you're just lightly browning the lamb. Just to get a bit of flavor in there, a bit of extra flavor. And so the meat soaks up some of that onion and garlic and ginger. Okay, that's browned enough. You don't want it too brown. Okay, next we're going to add the curry powder. A couple of
couple of tablespoons if you can. Doesn't have to be hot. Mild curry powder is fine, that's what I'm using here. You just do a minute like this. Now the smell is going to be amazing. Oh yeah, that's good. So just a minute, let it sear in. Don't let it burn if you can. It's a bit tricky. But you're going to sort of deglaze it with the stock anyway. That's it. Let the meat absorb all of that curry powder. Okay, that's starting to just stick at the bottom. So we'll add our tomatoes. If you're doing this out in the field, don't have a tin up, don't try and get these pulley ones, they're much better. Ring pull. Good stir, let it get to the bottom. Okay, now add your stock. Now I'm using beef stock, but you know, you can use chicken stock or even vegetable stock. If you want, doesn't matter. You're gonna cook off quite a lot of that liquid. Okay, so what you want to do is let that come to the boil. And then simmer it for about, well, because it's lamb, it's quite tender, cooks easily. So you're going to want to simmer that for, uh, I'd say, 10 minutes. Honestly, it doesn't take long. All the, all the color to go from the tomatoes. Okay. This is bubbling nicely. Nice. Now what you're trying to do here is, so you don't cover it. Now what you're trying to do here is burn off as much of that liquid as possible. You're reducing, basically you're reducing uh, the stock and the tomato juice and all the other juices um, until you've got it to sort of a thickish gravy consistency. Now you don't have to add the coconut cream. I add it to give it that creamy texture that I like in a curry. Changes the color of it, makes it a bit lighter. It makes it look more like a sort of a korma, but it doesn't affect the heat. I'm sitting two meters away from the fire. The wind is blowing the other way. And it's hot. I'm in a t-shirt. I'm not even under the tarp. Uh, I'm cooking away from the tarp. The, the camera is under the tarp. And I, this is hot. Really hot. It's a brilliant fire.
and I've still got plenty of wood left over as well for when I'm having my cigar. Oh, and I have one more beer left after this. And fittingly, the beer that I have for after is a lager. Because in England, <laughs> where I'm from, it's typical to have a lager with your curry. Not as tasty as pale ale or anything else, but refreshing with a with a beer, uh, with a curry. So as you saw, this dish is so simple. Honestly, you really don't need much. The biggest faff is chopping up the onions and garlic and ginger. But to be honest, you can get those in jars. Just the onion you need to chop up. And if you've got a good curry powder, that one's not the best. I do use another one, usually. Uh, I just didn't have time to get it. But this one will do. Curry powder contains a lot of different things. A good curry powder should have garam masala in it, a bit of turmeric, and some other herb uh, spices. I mean, this isn't far off a lamb rogan josh. But I didn't want to call it a lamb rogan josh because it's not pure lamb rogan josh. So I just thought I'll call it a lamb curry. Oh yeah. It's coming along nicely. You can taste the lamb in it. I don't know if you can hear that bubbling. It's a great sound. That's mm. really important not to end up with just a lamb stew. I've been to a few curry houses where, honestly, it just didn't taste of anything. Yeah, lamb stew is being polite. It's my fire cranking away there. <laughs> it's two meters away and it is really hot. You can see the three logs are still there that I put on over an hour ago. Over an hour ago. And they're still sitting there. This beech wood is uh, very, very dense. Burns for a long, long time. So you add the coconut cream when you're finished reducing the water. You're making the gravy. Okay, I think that's reduced enough. Yeah, it's getting thick now. Okay, time to add the coconut cream. Mmm, that's good.
Okay, last but not least, I'm going to put a bit of coriander, fresh coriander in there. Yeah, for this, I'm just going to pull it apart. You don't need to chop it. So I'm going to take that off the heat, the curry, because now it's time to do the rice. Okay, well, the memory card, ow, that's hot. The memory card <laughs> just died on me there. But anyway, what I ended up doing was putting the rice straight in with a little bit of water, about 30 ml, just to heat through. and some curry. <laughs> oh yeah, this smells great. Oh, I forgot my naan, but that will only take me a minute. Get all that meat out. Oh, that's good. Maybe some gravy. Oh, it's making too much of a mess. Okay. I think this is a garlic line. Yeah, it is. All right. So, one garlic naan on the fire. Don't think that needs to go on for very long at all. It's definitely hot. Yowza. Ow, ow, ow. Yep, that's hot. Tear a bit off. Ow, hot, 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 hot. Oh. Oh, yeah. And there we have it. Lamb curry. Palau rice and naan. And a beer. And my lager ready. Okay. Bon appetit. Mmm. Oh, it's hot, but it's so good. Oh, 
Why is it so hot? I'm going to dip some of my bread in crusty bits where it's touched the wood. Delicious. Mmm. This is so good. This is an Emerson's Underground Lager. Cheers. Mm. That's really good. Mm. You can really taste the coriander. And the lamb is so perfect. <laughs> okay. I'm going to devour as much of this as possible. Enjoy the fire and come back to you afterwards. Oh, it was a great meal. So stuffed. But you know what? No matter how full I am, never full enough to not have a cigar. It's cigar time. Away from the fire, it is really cold. I'd say it's only seven, six degrees centigrade. But around this thing, it is baking hot. It's just a big bundle of red hot coals and beautiful flame. Incredibly hot. Bit of rum. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. I wish Bruce was here with me next time.
It's been a great day. Just chilling out. Beautiful weather today. Stunning. Had a really good walk, hike, an hour out. some chores, chopped up all the firewood, roasting hot fire, which has been going, oh, been going about almost four hours now. I've still got two more split pieces to put on. I'm not sure if I'm going to need them. Cooked up a great curry. Oh, that was so good. So filling. And the naan, doing the naan straight on the logs, the, the crispy burnt bit was delicious. Tasted like it had been in a tandoor. Oops. You deal with that. Just pick that up, put it back on. Oh my god, that is such a hot fire. Honestly, the second you step about five meters away from this thing, it's freezing cold. But I'm so hot in front of it. It's incredible. You can see my breath though. The wind has really died down, the waves have died down. You can just hear them now. Turning into a bit of a ripple now. Oh, what a great way to uh, celebrate 10,000 subscribers. I don't know how many I'll have when I get back home. There's no signal here at all, nothing. I've got my satellite communicator, but that's just for messages. Um, so, be interested to see what it's at. And then in a few more days, I'm going out again. Got a big storm coming. Big storm. So I'm sure you're all going to be happy that there's a bit of camping in the rain going on. Oh, my eyes. Yeah, a lot of rain. So hopefully that pans out into a, a great one. And I'm not sure not sure if I'm going to do that one in a hammock or a tent. Yeah. I want to try out this new Amok Ramor 5.0 that I've got. But I didn't get the sleeping pad. The Amok sleeping pad. I thought, oh, I'll use my Thermarest. Big mistake. Doesn't work. Sat on it and went straight down. Uh, the Amok needs pads that the ridges go lengthways the thermarest neo air goes widthways so it just folds in the middle it's no use so I, i'm waiting for a sleeping pad to arrive i don't think it will arrive in time which is a shame because i really wanted to do it in that but something tells me with all this rain and wind i'm going to be glad to have a tent anyway and i'll definitely have bruce with me and he'll be better off in the tent with me anyway, as well. But which tent? If I'm going in a tent, which tent? Do I stick with the Steiker? I love this, it's a great tent, it really is. Do I go in my MSR, Hubba Hubba? That's my favorite tent. Do I do a tunnel tent? I don't know. Maybe I'll do a pole. See what everyone wants to see. I think a couple of uh, companies have asked me to test tents for them or something. I can't remember who it was. Uh, I think Nature Hike was one of them, a Chinese Chinese brand.
we'll see. I think a lot of people test nature hike stuff. And, um, I don't know, it's probably pretty good stuff. So I'm not sure, I can't remember the tent they're sending me. But there's another company as well sending me another one. So these are good value tents apparently, you know, quite cheap. So accessible for all of you. Sorry about the smoke. It's going straight into the camera. It's a bad spot. How's that? Is that better? There's a really cold breeze coming from behind me. It's very cold. But the heat from this fire is so strong, it's so hot that this is actually quite refreshing. This is burning hot, this is refreshing. So I'm finding a balance. All right, I'm gonna finish up the cigar, clean everything up, just chill in front of the fire and come back to you uh, when I'm hitting the sack. What is it? Oh, it's quarter past 11. I just tried some night photography. <laughs> I stayed up just sitting in front of the fire until it had gone right down. Just, you know, such a beautiful evening. Um, it's been a great day, but I'm tired now, ready for some sleep. So, unless anything happens, as usual, I'll catch you in the morning. Tonight I've got just the two top vents open. It's much colder tonight, but uh, I'm well wrapped up. Okay, see you in the morning. Oh. Morning. It's almost eight. I had a good night's sleep. This thermarest. Oh. Max. Oh, so comfy. I've got it just right. It got cold last night. I had, a, had my arm out. I felt it. It was really cold. So I got tucked in my... Uh, conundrum quilt. Oh, I love being in a quilt. And this is extra wide and long. Oh, so it's nice. You don't have to zip up in it at all. And because there's no draft in this tent at all, because it's a four season tent and it's got solid walls, there's only, you know, as much mesh as you want because you can zip the panels up here. The, both doors are uh, got two layers there's no draft it vents perfectly there's no condensation but there's no draft so you don't have to do the uh the quilt up so it just drapes over the side of you like in bed oh it's nice it is nice it's a great setup that was lovely look at my view from inside the tent you probably can't see all the sand flies on the mesh. But here, they're everywhere. Loads and loads of them. Look at it out there. Something came traipsing through the camp last night because my curry has been knocked over. It's in the spare Nalgene bottle over there. And I heard it. A massive flipping stag come tramping through so loud as it ran off. It's a beautiful morning.
my two swans and signet are back. They must really love that spot. Sand flies everywhere this morning. I haven't put any DEET on. The fantails are doing a good job of catching them. A couple in particular that are hanging around, maybe because I'm here and it's attracting the sand flies. And they're swooping around, taking them out of the air. They're very cute little birds. What a calm, peaceful, beautiful morning. The sun doesn't hit this spot for I think another half an hour. It's behind a, a, a hill, just where the swans are. So I'm gonna take my time this morning. I'm in no hurry. And then uh, that's a bellbird, that sound. Uh, that chirping is this fantail behind me. <sighs> going back and forth, grabbing the sand flies in the air. Yeah, I'm going to chill out. I'm going to have a couple of cups of coffee. <laughs> Hello. And then uh, come back when everything's ready to pack up or packed up. And then it's the boat trip back. So I'll come back after... I've chillaxed with my coffee. Missing Bruce. Wish Bruce was here with me. Okay. Okay, everything's squared away. So that's all clear. Just gotta scatter the uh, bonfire ashes, wet it all down, grab all this stuff, put it in the boat, and we're good to go. So I'll catch you from the boat. All right, we're good to go. Everything's sorted on the boat, engine started perfectly. Time to head back. Spot's all clear, show you where I was. So, over there, in that little nook just there. Very well shielded. You wouldn't have known I was here except for the boat. But yeah, good to go. We've got to go have a nice crossing. So let's do it. is invigorating. Okay, we get to the car. It takes about half an hour to get across this lake. It's a big lake. I'll see you back at the car. Right, all packed up, everything's ready to go. 
thanks for joining me on this journey. Um, it's been great, had a great time. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe to get future videos as well. I've got another big rain one coming next. And uh, hopefully you enjoy all these, uh, these videos I'm doing. And thank you for the 10,000, hitting the 10,000 subscribe mark and asking for merchandise, which will be coming soon as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to head home. You might see Bruce when I get home. You never know. Thanks for coming. Bye, everybody. Where is he? There he is. Hey, Brucey. Oh. I know you couldn't come on this one. I'm coming. Hello. 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 Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Hello. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. Hello. Oh, yes. Say hello to your fans, because you're going to be on the end of this video. Hello, everybody on YouTube. So you got to see Bruce after all. All right. Thank you for my kisses. Happy to see me. Bye, Bruce. Bye, everybody.